Okay, so let's finish off the rest of them here. Okay. Okay, Mia Jade 18. What are the things that make you forget your eating habits problems, even just for a little while? I love your videos, by the way. Thank you, I love you. Um, the things that make me forget, I guess, honestly, if I'm being honest, like something that is so like overpowering my bad eating disorder feelings. Does that make sense? That does not make sense. So like, for instance, when my grandma died, <laughs> um, that's all I was thinking about. Like, yes, I binge and purge a lot, but it was more out of habit and it was more for comfort. But as far as the thoughts in my eating disorder went, I wasn't thinking eating disorder thoughts. I just was doing it for comfort because my mind was so overwhelmed with my grandma. Same thing has happened in any any tragedy or any hard situation that I've been through, like I, I will automatically go to binging and purging for comfort, but my mind is somewhere else. I don't know how to, that sounds so weird. I don't know how to explain this, but it's true. Um, I don't know how to explain that, okay? I don't know. <laughs> but now, like as in, when I say now, I mean like the last couple of weeks. Since after my grandma died, I've been trying to practice some other things. Like I've been trying to practice um, thinking more about like, like my future instead of my present. Like lately I've been thinking a lot about moving out of my parents' house finally and getting our own place and what we need to do to do that and how much money we're going to need to save to do that and trying to you know do more adult things and pay off bills and and do more cleaning and cooking and do like more things that i've been wanting to do for a long time but i didn't have the energy or the desire um but that's kind of what i've been focusing on lately and it's been really helping to combat my eating disorder thoughts because sometimes i'll get an eating disorder thought and it's like that is the stupidest thought ever. Why am I even thinking that? That's so stupid. Where before, before I would have been like, yeah, I should probably listen to that and I should probably do what it's telling me. But now it's like, I'm getting stronger. Cause I'm like, that's the stupidest thought I've ever had. Why would I want to go and binge and purge again? Like that's a waste of more money and more food. <laughs> that's a waste of time. It's gonna make my face puffier. It's gonna make everything worse. It's gonna make me lose time with family that I care about. Like those kinds of things are starting to happen and i think it just comes with practice i really do like for me i think it's going to take a long time for it to be like that all the time like that's only happening a little bit here and there now for me but i think it's going to take a while so practice that as well maybe practice like focus on your future goals like what do you where do you want to be if you if you if you want to be here and you have a picture of your best future in mind like what you picture what you want your future to be picture that and try um, aiming for it. Try putting your thoughts on that and what you're gonna have to do step by step and just take it little steps at a time and see what it is that you're gonna have to do to get there. And that might be really hard. It's always been hard for me and it's not something I started doing till recently, but it does work. It does work. So give that a try and I hope that helps. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> Okay, Peyton Raposa, question. Hi, Shani. Hi. <sighs> you are very beautiful and kind. Oh, thank you. So are you. I love your videos so much. Thank you. I love your videos too. I love your comments. Thank you. Who is your favorite Disney princess and what is your favorite color? I love you, Shani. I love you too, honey. You're so sweet. <laughs> okay, Peyton, my favorite Disney princess. Oh, good heavens. That's a hard one. Growing up, it was always Cinderella. Always, always, it was Cinderella. I also loved Sleeping Beauty just because, only because of the dress thing and how her dress would change colors when they were dancing or whatever and how the the, the fairies would change. Like, I love fairies. I love anything like, like, like fairy-like and like wizard-like. Like I loved the sword and the stone only because of the wizard and the witch that was in it. I love wizards and witches and, and fairies and things like that. So like I always loved Sleeping Beauty because of what the fairies would do to her dress because I love color. You guys know that I love all colors, especially that gorgeous blue and that gorgeous pink that her dress would always be. So that was another one. But I would say recently my most favorite is definitely Rapunzel from Tangled. Um, 
I don't know. I have a feeling I'm really going to like that Hawaiian chick that's coming up in that new one. What's it called? That new one where she's a little bit curvy. Like, that's awesome. It's not bad to be skinny. I'm not saying it's bad to be skinny. Um, I need to talk about that sometime. I don't ever want to put off that I, that I think it's bad to be skinny. I just really like it when people recognize that curves are beautiful too. So anyway, so I don't know her name, some sort of Hawaiian princess movie that's coming out. I forget. I don't know, but that's just what I've heard. I haven't even seen her. I don't know, but I have a feeling that I'm going to like her. Um, but no, I like Rapunzel. I think she's a tough chick. Um, she has gorgeous hair and she has a voice like mine a little bit except better like I feel like my voice is most similar to hers except for hers is like a little like 10 levels better but I just love her I love the story I love that her mom again is some sort of mystical witch like person I know she's not a witch but it kind of is she a witch wait at the beginning he says what does he say was was she a witch I don't know Anyway, yes, Rapunzel. Thank you for the question. Oh, and what's my favorite color? I love all colors, all colors except forest green. I hate forest green. I hate forest green, but pink is always and always, no, pink. Okay, red was my favorite color growing up all the time. When I became a teenager-ish, it's changed to pink and yellow and it stayed that way forever. And forever pink has always been my go-to favorite color. Like, do you know what I mean? So like. Pink, pink is my ultimate favorite color, but then every like week I switch and I have another favorite color that goes with it. So like some weeks it's purple and pink, some weeks it's aqua blue and pink, some weeks it's yellow and pink. Like I, it's always pink, but then I always have another favorite color that switches all the time because I love every color in the world except for a screen again. So thank you for the question. Okay. <coughs> okay, Selena, Selena's Portraits says, Hey Shani, I don't really know what to do right now. One of my best friends has anorexia and depression. Yesterday we met because she'll go to a boarding school in two days and we talked a lot, of course. We have already talked about suicide in the past, but back then I didn't think too much of it because I thought she, because I thought she just thought about it like most people do from time to time. Like I could jump down the balcony, but I won't type of a thing. <coughs> But yesterday, she suddenly said that she had ruined her life and that she would have already killed herself if she had enough pills. Oh dear. Um, I was shocked and I didn't know what to say. And so I didn't do anything to comfort her or said anything nice. So we just moved on with another topic. I feel so bad right now. I don't even know what to ask specifically. Um, I just don't know what to do. She has, she has lost weight again, completely unintentional. And it might be that she has that she has to go to a clinic again instead of finishing school. And I'm really afraid that she will try to kill herself if that's the case. Ooh, that's a heavy one. Okay, well, you guys know that, um, my bird is so, I came out here so that she wouldn't be loud and you wouldn't hear her and you can still hear her out here. I'm filming. Okay, you cannot, first of all, just because somebody tells you that they're going to kill themselves or that they want to or that they almost did or, they're, or now they're going to or whatever, you absolutely cannot take it up upon yourself for it to be your fault because it's not. Just because they told you about it, it doesn't mean it's your fault. So I just want to clear that up first of all. I know you didn't say you feel that way, but I just want to put that out there just in case you do feel that way. Second of all, I would say, honestly, 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 I have also dealt with a lot of people in my life and I even was one of them at once, you guys, who have used suicide as a way to get attention. And I'm not saying that your friend is doing that, I'm just saying that I have experienced that. And so I'm gonna tell you what I've experienced and if it sounds similar to what you're going through, then maybe you can look at it in a different way. I don't know, let's try this. So for instance, when I was a teenager, I would say that all the time. I would say, if you don't, I'm gonna kill myself. Like, he doesn't like me, I'm gonna kill myself. I'm failing at school, I'm gonna kill myself. My mom won't give me attention, I'm gonna kill myself. My sisters won't give me attention, I'm gonna kill myself. Even though they all gave me attention, I just was, 
I just was struggling with so many things that I needed so much more attention than a normal person would. And so I used it, I did. There were a couple of times where I actually um, attempted and those were the times that I didn't tell anybody. And that's what worries me. Like it would worry me if she didn't tell you, but you think that she is, which is what it sounds like. And that's what I'm worried about. But I do wanna say like I have, exp oh, I guess I shouldn't say specifically, but there have been a lot of people in my life where they threaten suicide for the span of time that I was close to them, probably 40 or 50 times, seriously, and they never did it and they never did anything, anything at all, you know, like, like, so you got to be careful. And I felt like it was used as a manipulation tactic. And that's probably where I learned it. That's probably why I did it. And I'm not, I'm not blaming it on someone else. I'm just saying that that's probably where I learned it and it wasn't right. And I admit that now. And I've always admitted that since I've known that it's not right and blah, blah, blah. but anyway um however on the flip side I did attempt when and I didn't tell anybody about it because I didn't want to hurt anybody anymore and I also didn't want anybody to stop me however again on another flip side I don't know if I've talked about this before um I had a stepsister who took her life a few years ago and she was 20 years old I believe it was just a few years ago and um, she had attempted suicide I think it was 36 times before it actually worked I guess I don't know um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. I don't want to go into more detail but my point is is that she might have come across as somebody who attempted so many times and might have been looking for attention or she could have come across as somebody who really actually was suicidal like there's no way to know and i've always said to myself like because we believe we believe in our religion okay we believe that murder sends you to hell okay if you murder somebody you go to hell so there's always been this underlying you know kind of unspoken it's never really been spoken about out loud in our church it's just been spoken between people that it's like if you kill yourself is that considered murder and will you go to hell suicide is such a broad complicated thing that none of us can determine or um foresee or like there are so many different cases where people either are like you have no idea anything was even wrong with them and all of a sudden they kill themselves or there's those people where you know that they've had depression for years and years and years and they're they're cutters they have eating disorders they've attempted before and then they kill themselves like you never know when it's going to happen and that's why you can't blame yourself and you can't put it on yourself because you have no control over it and I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that they don't even have their control over it and that's what happens that's how they commit suicide is that they completely lose control of who they are who they are deep down who their heart is where they come from what they believe in all of that is lost and it is lost to a very evil presence which convinces them to do it. And I have always said to myself, I do not believe with any ounce of my heart that if you kill yourself, you go to hell. I do not believe that. I don't care what other people believe around me. I don't care any of that. I do not believe that because I've been thinking about it so often and I'm like, well, what if I were to go jump off a cliff and halfway down while I'm falling, I change my mind? but it's too late because I'm about to die. Like we never know what's going on in somebody's mind. So I really honestly believe that the absolute best thing you can do for somebody who you think is suicidal is to love them, to let them know that you're there for them if they need anything, but also to prove to them, I guess, their worth. If you really want to go above and beyond, really spend time with them, really like, point out things about them that are not just surfacey. like point out like good like their good heart and they're good like talk to them about good memories with them talk to them about you know like this is like you could even be the example and be like yeah so i've been thinking about my future and um like i really want i want like five kids i want you know a husband i want to graduate college i want to do all this blah 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 and maybe that will get them thinking about it i don't know this is one of those things where I don't have the answers, you don't have the answers, nobody does. 
all you can really honestly always do is to love them for sure. And then if you want to go above and beyond that, then just try and be sensitive and try and think how you might feel if you were having a hard time wanting to stay in this life. What would you want to hear from your friends? What would you want to hear from your family? The best thing that I can think of is to just be a good example of living life and like be an example of what life can be and show that to your friend and maybe she'll catch on because a lot of us are very influenced by each other. That's in our human nature to be influenced by each other. And so use that in a good way. I don't know, this is a tough one. I'm gonna ask everybody else watching, leave some opinions down below. Let's get this conversation started because this is a really, obviously I'm having a hard time answering it. I don't even know what to say. So let's leave our opinions below. Let's have a, um, respectful conversation about it. Not that you guys ever are not respectful. I have the best community in my comments. Like, I love you guys so much. My Shani family is the best group of people in the world and you guys are always respectful and kind. So let's get it started. Does anybody have any thoughts on this question? And thank you for that question. That's a big one. And just know that I will be, I will be praying for your friend hard. I will be praying because you just never know. Um, and I'll be praying for you to know what to do. So, and if you don't believe in God, then um, send her good thoughts or whatever. Just, uh, just yeah. I'm really sorry, Selena, that you're going through this. Like that's that's wow. I don't yeah. Okay. Okay. Seconds and forever. Can you do an interview with your mom or stepdad and how they got to be so understanding towards your eating disorder? Because I noticed in the restaurant vlog that they seem to understand and it would help to have something for other parents to relate to and help them um, from that perspective. Also, can you talk about the type of bipolar disorder that you have and how it affects your eating disorder? Okay, first of all, yes, I will ask my mom. I bet she would do it. I think she would do it. Um, She's a little camera shy, but I think she'll do it. I think she will. Um, Cause you guys know her by now. You've seen her a few times, right? So she'll be, yeah, I think she'll do it. Um, but as far as the other thing, can I talk about my bipolar disorder? Um, I've mentioned before that I was at one time diagnosed with bipolar and I still believe that I have a little bit of it in me. Like I believe that I always have. Um, my dad and um, and my mom both come from lines and years and generations of mental illness. And my dad's side is like overly bipolar, like extreme bipolar. And every one of us children um, got it at least a little bit. Some of us a lot, some of us a little here and there. Like we've all had it. We've all know what it feels like, blah, blah, blah. Um, for me, I feel like for me, I feel like it's gone down over since I got married. I feel like mine was a lot worse when I was a teenager. Um, there have been times in between our marriage that I feel like it's kind of come back and I can like feel that it's like another illness presence that's there with me. I don't know how to explain it where one minute I'll just be feeling like I am so ready to just, I am pumped, I'm ready to live, I'm ready to be here, I'm ready to fight, I'm ready to get better, I'm ready to, you know, get myself well. And the next minute I'm like, I'm ready to slip my wrist and kill myself, like I'm done, I am done. And that that tends to happen to me during stressful times. That happens to me during stress or during tragedy, like it's happened many, many times in the past couple weeks since my grandma died. My husband is being extremely patient with me. All of you are being extremely patient with me. I haven't showed you it a whole lot because I don't want to show you that. Why would I want you to see that? But lately I've been having so many ups and downs that it's actually been prominent for me and it hasn't been that. Is it prominent or dominant? Dominant? Dominant. Prominent. Is that the same thing? What's the difference? Dominate, domination and problem. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, right? So I really believe that my bipolar comes out during circumstantial reasons, like tragedy or like the divorce. I, I had a big episode with it with the divorce, um, different other hard things that happened to me. Uh, yeah, like anything, anything hard that ever happened to me, that's when my bipolar really kind of showed up. But I always feel like that I have it inside of me though. I really do. And I feel like it's just kind of um, natural. I, I feel like it's just in my chemicals and I really feel like it's just hereditary. 
Um, but the actions of bipolar only come out in me when something hard is happening. So I don't know. Did that make sense? I don't know. Okay, Alina Lunier, excellent look senior. I love your videos and you're so strong. Thank you. I was wondering about your views as a Mormon because I have no idea what Mormon views are. Same with Christian, to be honest. Um, also, what are your views on the gay community? That also goes, goes along with the Mormon question because I don't know what the views on gay people are in your community. This is a very, 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 very heavy question. And I am deciding in this moment whether I want to get in this right now. I'm just going to say right now what I've always said, um, which is that regardless of what you believe in, what you think is right, what you think is wrong, especially when it comes to Christianity, even when it comes to the gay thing, when it comes to smoking and drinking and everything that we don't believe in, in our religion, I have always thought to myself, above all, above all, I believe in loving people and in being Christ-like. I am a Christian, I follow Christ, I try and be Christ-like. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that if Christ were to come again, when he does come again, he's not going to turn away people who are gay and who smoke and who drink and who have unmarried sex and prostitutes and all that, whatever. Like he's not gonna turn them away. He's gonna bring in them in and he's gonna hug them. And whether or not it's a sin, whether or not you'll go to hell for it, that is absolutely not my call. That is absolutely none of my business. It is not my judgment. That is between you and God. And if I really, really believe that, if I really believe that something's wrong or that something's right or whatever it is that I do believe, I know I can stand here and say that I have to leave that up to God. That has nothing to do with me. It doesn't do anybody any good by giving my opinion on it. However, my opinion is that we should all love each other no matter what. I don't care who you love. I don't care if you're a guy who loves a guy. I don't care if you're a girl who loves a girl. I don't care as far as between what that means for your salvation and what that means between you and God. That's between you, you and God and that's between you and your salvation. That has nothing to do with me. And I love you all. I don't judge anybody. I don't judge anybody, even if you're doing something that I personally don't do, which is drinking, smoking, the gay thing, premarital sex, any of that. I'm not going to judge you for that. I don't care. I think you're a beautiful person. Every single one of us has beauty in us, and that's not what matters. What matters is how we treat people, how we love people, how kind we are to people. And as far as what's right and what's wrong, leave that up to God because this world is full of enough judgment. The last thing we need is one more person sitting here telling you that what you're doing is wrong or right or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Like, it's not my business. And all I can do is love people, try not to judge. I spent so, m I wasted so much time judging people during my teenage-ish years, I guess. Oh, and if I could take those that time back, my goodness, you guys, like it's just pointless. None of us, none of us should be judging each other for our beliefs. Nobody. Like you shouldn't even judge me for my belief, just like I shouldn't judge you for being gay. Nobody should judge anybody for your beliefs or for your feelings or anything. Let's all just love each other and get through this life, which is already hard enough. We don't need each other attacking each other and things like that. So whatever, like, like I don't. I have no problem when I see a guy loving a guy or a girl loving a girl. I don't have a problem with that. All I see is that they love each other. As far as whether or not it's right or wrong, that's not up to me. And I know that might sound like a cowardly answer, but it's not. This is an answer that has come very difficult for me to find for myself. And I was always very torn. I was always torn in between feeling what I was taught to believe and what I do believe and how I feel towards people. And I always felt like I had to go with what I was taught and what I felt. But then I realized that what I taught and what I felt is love. What I believe as a Christian is to love everybody no matter what, unless they're like trying to murder you or rape your kids or burn you like Hitler did to all the Jews. Like, unless that's happening. So for all of my Mormon friends out there, I'm not being a coward. I am honestly, this is how I feel about it. 
This is honestly how I feel. I will fight this to the death saying that whether or not it's right or wrong to be gay, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that we love each other no matter what. And since I started doing that, I can tell you I love myself a lot better since I've started doing that, since I stopped judging people, since I stopped trying to look for drama everywhere and trying to look for something to gossip about and something, you know, like ever since I stopped doing that, I am happier and I feel good about myself and I feel good about the person that I am. So whoever you are out there, if you're a woman who loves a woman, if you're a guy who loves a guy, if you drink, if you smoke, if you do drugs, if you have premarital sex, if you do any of that, I don't give a crap as long as you're a good person and you do good things for people and you treat people kindly and you love people and you give people respect. That's all I care about. So that's all. Okay. Tina trying to get fit. Hey, Shani, I discovered your videos a few days ago. I've been recovering from my eating disorder for years. Eating disorders always seem to sneak back up. <clears throat> that I never spoke to anyone about besides my family and my husband, except now with you and all who follow. Yep. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I am currently on the path to trying to lose weight, um, to get back to a healthy weight, because I still have a very unhealthy relationship with food and was starting to fall back into old ways. That is until I saw your videos. Your videos shook me up and reminded me of all the issues my binging, purging, and starving just to binge and purge more have done to my body throughout the early 20s and teen years. Thank you for your videos. I really needed to see them and to remind myself that I can continue to fight Ed and other issues I have going on. You're a kick butt girl and I hope your videos bring light to other women and men's lives like it did to mine. You're an inspiration and I'll keep you in my prayers to help kick, to help kick your eating disorder out the door. Love you, Shani. I love you too, Tina. That wasn't a question. I didn't know that wouldn't be a question. It was just like the sweetest comment ever. So thank you. I really appreciate that. You're so sweet. Oh, that just made my day. Okay, so that's all for, I think I finished all of the questions from Instagram. Um, I will be back for more Q&A on Tuesday and you will see me every day for the next nine more days, I believe, answering a question from Tommy. So go and check that video out today. That should be up today also. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Join my fa my Shani family and my Shani fannies, and join me in my recovery to find recovery, my journey, my recovery journey to find journeys, recovery. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave any questions below if you want and I'll try and answer them on Tuesday's video. And that's it. So I love you guys and I'll see you in another video. You are beautiful, you are worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching, bye. <laughs> I can't see you, I have a cold. Okay, bye.